Joshua with Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, if the video is something that uh, adds to you and is an asset, please press like. And if you find the content that could be helpful to a friend or something, do pass that on. I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, Gosford, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. Many of us are in situations where things haven't panned out the way we would have liked them to. And this can happen for many different reasons. It can happen through tragedy. It can through, happen through unexpected crisis. It can happen through the loss of somebody in your life, through death. It can happen via breakup, which is a big subject of mine and what happens through breakup. It can happen through circumstance. It can happen through tragedy. It can happen through an accident. It can happen through losing your job. It can happen through losing your marriage. It can happen through your car breaking down in the wrong place. It can happen through all different kinds of reasons. It can happen through meeting the wrong person, being around the wrong people, getting stuck in a lift, falling down the stairs. There's a whole range of things that can happen that can change the course of your life. But there's also a way in which you can change the course of your life for positive or negative, and that is by the personal decisions that we make, the decisions that we make that impact our life and the way that we live. Many of us, or many of you, have struggled throughout your lives with addictions and sexual addiction as well. One, sexual addiction is quite a taboo subject, but it's real and it's driven by the culture of today. Um, a lot of people that suffer from sexual addiction have been abused at younger stages in their life and that's tragic and unfair. Um, these, also, these situations also contribute to addictions. It's sort of like a downward spiral that escalates till the person's really just a shell. But this can also come down to choices because there's bad stories about where these people end up and there's good stories about where these people end up. But in saying that, you also have to consider that everybody's different and everybody is going to be impacted differently to the way in which their sexual abuse has taken place, the grooming the and ultimately the, the intrusion. In many, many ways, uh, sexual abuse is rampant in, in, in our faces, on TV. Um, it's really, in a lot of ways, there's a lot of what would be described as consensual rape going on out there by way of uh, the justification in which thing, the way people get treated. And there are all different ways in which people are approach the sanctity of sex. Uh, for the most part, people want to be exclusive because our psychological and spiritual makeup is um, created in a way in which is similar to the Creator, which is one relationship, one God with a tri He's one God with a triune being. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we're one person that is a triune being, spirit, soul, and body, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. And out of our like, image and likeness to God, if you remember, he said that it wasn't good for man to be alone and gave him one partner. Now, for all intensive purposes, he could have given two or three. But it wasn't his likeness to do that. 
God wants us to be focused, wants us to be able to um, create and construct lives that are as peaceful as possible and as fruitful as possible because he said go and be fruitful and multiply. But it was always to be between the man and the woman, singular. Now, there's a lot of um, pride getting around out there where it's supposed to be um, beneficial to have more than one person. Well, I can assure you it's not. For those that have and it works, good luck to you. You stay in your world. Whatever that is, um, it's definitely not the Christian world, uh, and that probably doesn't matter to these people, but the Christian way of life, the way of the Lord Jesus Christ, and his perspective, his um, advice on how to live relative to a relationship is the safest. And it's never guaranteed because people are uh, individual and make their own choices that everything for, by reason of use is going to work. But they're the safest principles that you can have and that is to love one person as well as you can um, in the spirit of which the relationship is contained. Now, the next thing is you're up against uh, people with carnal, sinful natures and you've got one as well. And it will pop up it will pop up when you least expect it in the relationship. And it comes from the inside out. The only way it can come at you from the outside in is through your partner or people who are directly connected to your partner who want to bung on hostility and other stuff, which is common. But for yourself, you do need to understand that you have a carnal, sinful nature and it does work against you. For some people, it's more distant than others. Um, it's just the way that it's all worked out. It's like some people are born normal and others are more unfortunate. Um, it's the same with our sinful, evil nature. Some people are born with more protection from it than others. And this is just count yourself fortunate if you're one of these people that hasn't got a sinful nature hounding at you just by way of the way in which you've been created. So then you've got these, um, looking back at the sexual part of this, these people that want company. But again, by nature, their sinful nature has a way of weaving itself into the relationship and deconstructing it um, subconsciously through psychological um, characteristical flaws that are abrasive and can work in the spiritual realm. You can't necessarily see these things at work against a relationship working through you or working through your partner um, in a way in which is deconstructive to the relationship. And this is where a lot of people um, don't understand what's happening because they're not aware of the unseen influences and temperances that can have a cause and effect on the relationship in the spiritual realm. There is a spiritual realm that's working within the relationship. Uh, many people, as much as they, let's take sex for instance, have a uh, level of sex that they, they enjoy. That can change through the activation of sex in a relationship. It can heighten. Um, it can shift interest from the person that you're with 
to make the person want to look outwardly. Um, that in itself has spiritual implications that can work for and against a relationship and if we're not aware of it, can completely undo it. Uh, attitudes, as we know, the way we communicate, how transparent we are, what other influences we allow in and out of the relationship, where we spread ourselves emotionally, all these things have massive um, impacts detrimentally and positively on our relationship depending on how ordered we are and how combative we are against the evil that will come to try and pull the relationship down. So when the good Lord said you to love your neighbour as yourself, he meant what he said because unless we're completely aware of ourself, then we're not going to have a complete awareness of what's happening within the other person. And this is where we get sideswiped, damaged, hurt, harmed, maimed and all the rest of it because of the fact that we just have not been aware enough with ourselves to be aware of other people. We can work out a suspicion, we can work out of um, paranoia, but, we, but the main way God wants us to work in our relationship is by faith. And, and this takes navigation, because faith only works through love, but you cannot love bad, bad behaviour, deconstructive behaviour. Um, but a lot of people do. They haven't got the courage to confront the issues. And before they know it, the issue's confronting them and everything's collapsing around them and um, there's undue arguments and all the rest of it. So you need to stay aware of yourself. And by staying aware of yourself in a healthy, um, faith-working through love way, you shall love your neighbour as yourself, which is not harming yourself or anybody else, you'll be able to sense evil if it starts coming from you, coming at you within the relationship and you'll act accordingly to it because evil is not welcome in our relationships. So I hope this has helped. This is just a short, short um, quick uh awareness video on relationships you have to really you have to be aware of yourself while functioning in your partnership um, don't allow any outside influences into the privacy of that uh, you have every right to have unbiased um, contributors to your uh, personal awareness of the relationship um, but remember the privacy of the relationship is paramount to the trust that you'll have with the person that you're with. And counsel, if you uh, seek it, must be from um, a person or people that are not biased, that will tell you the way things truly are and give you every opportunity to be able to bring things into the order that benefits you and your relationship at the utmost. You've been listening to Reverend Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia. Remember, don't harm yourself, and therefore, hopefully out of that, you won't harm anybody else. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channels, a pro brick exclusive for the tradies and uh, people that aren't so religious, and pro-theologists for the Christians and other religious people that are interested in that side of life. Thank you for joining me and bye for now.